my name is Heather. I'm a senior support engineer here at CATI. And this is just a really good overview of how to use the Solid Network License Manager. So what we want to do is we want to take control of our licenses using that Solid Networks License Manager and an options file. And what we're going to look into today, we're going to look at three things. So we're going to look at setting up and configuring the SNL. So the SNL is where your licenses are actually divvied out if you guys have a network license. So we're going to know how do we set it up, configure it, some troubleshooting, and some things you might like to know about how the SNL works and how it gives out your licenses and everything. Then we're going to create file groups and restrictions. So this gets into controlling those licenses. So can creating groups of people and saying which licenses they can and can't have. And then we'll use some advanced capability, just some other keywords and stuff that we can throw into our options file and some basic troubleshooting that we want to go over. So we're going to cover these three topics. Like I said, my name's Heather. I went to school at Penn State for nuclear engineering. There's me in a rocket. Um, I've been using SOLIDWORKS since 2009, and there's just a quick list of my SOLIDWORKS certifications. I think I'm actually missing one because I got one recently. But with that being said, let's go ahead, let's get started, and let's look into the presentation. So the first thing I want to do is we want to set up and configure the SNL. So what is that? So what the SNL is, it's the Solid Network License Manager. So this is the server that holds all of your licenses and it communicates with all the clients, normally over ports 25734 and 25735. It dishes out these licenses and you guys can actually control um, who gets what licenses using the options file. But so you have a main server computer that all of the other computers can communicate with over these ports and that's how they give and receive those network licenses. And as far as the SNL and what version it has to be on in order for you to use SOLIDWORKS, so you definitely can use an older version of SOLIDWORKS with a newer version of the SNL. The way that SOLIDWORKS has it configured is the SNL needs to be newer than or equal to your PDM server and client. So the SNL has to be the newest thing out of your PDM server and client and your SOLIDWORKS server and client. The PDM server and client need to be the same major version but they can be a lesser version than the SNL. So if your PDM client is on 2019, you can have a 2020 SNL if for some reason you upgraded that when you installed it or anything like that. Everything will still work. It will still be able to give out the licenses. And then comes your SOLIDWORKS client. So this is what version of SOLIDWORKS you're using. So a lot of people like myself have actually multiple versions of SOLIDWORKS installed. So you see right here, I have 19 and 20 installed and I'm on a SOLIDWORKS network license. So your SOLIDWORKS network license can be any version as long as it is, is, a, is of a lesser version than the SNL and if you have PDM, PDM client. If you don't have PDM, you can just ignore this middle thing right here and just think about that your SOLIDWORKS client has to be equal to or less than whatever version your SNL is on. Well, how do I tell what version my SNL is? So the SNL, when it gets installed, two, there are two components that get installed. On every client, there is the Net License Manager client version, and this is what it looks like. And we'll open that and go through the tabs in just a second. So this is the SNL client. On every client with the Net License Manager on it, this program's here. So if I go into my programs, and I go down to SolidWorks, that I have the client. I also have the server because this is also my server, but every user with connecting to a network license has this solid network license manager client right here. And then on the server computer, so this is whichever computer is acting as the server, so it would be this server right here, it also has the solid net license manager server. And what you guys will notice is the client has four tabs and the server gets this extra server administration tab. So there are almost exactly the same, except for the server gets this server administration tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these tabs and take a look at what they do for us here. So I'm going to open up. This is the server license manager tab. I can tell because I have the server administration tab, but I'm actually going to go through the tabs in reverse order so we can kind of see what's going on here. 
the first tab is the license order tab. And what this does is it tells you, okay, what order do I want to start pulling my licenses in SOLIDWORKS? So let's, the key reason I see this happen, let's say I turn on SOLIDWORKS simulation and I have both a simulate a SOLIDWORKS premium license and a simulation premium license like I do right here. If I want to be using the premium features of simulation, so nonlinear and dynamic and all of that, I want to pull this simulation premium license. But if it pulls the SOLIDWORKS premium license first, I'll only have the basic simulation features. So if I know I'm going to be using nonlinear and dynamic a lot, I'll want to move this up. So when I turn on my simulation add-in, it knows that I want to pull the simulation premium license, not the SOLIDWORKS premium components of simulation. And this license tab is on every machine. You can configure it for um, different users. Um, so let's say I actually don't want them pulling a premium license unless all of the normal ones are out. So let's say normally they're just working in like a static dynamic study, then I would move this up and I can switch this out for all of the users. All right, the next one is the license borrowing, and this one's actually become very important recently. But what this does, it allows you to borrow licenses. So let's say I'm going to take my computer, I'm going to take it away from my server, and it's not going to be on the network anymore, but I still want to have access to SOLIDWORKS Professional. I can borrow licenses of SOLIDWORKS Premium, and let's say I want to borrow it until next week. So I borrow that license, and I can borrow the feature. I actually have a um, standard options file right now preventing me from borrowing it, but I can borrow that feature up until there. And what we're going to talk about is how we can actually restrict free people from borrowing too much. So if people are borrowing licenses and maybe borrowing it for too long of time, we only want them to be able to borrow a license for 36 hours, we'll see how we can set that up. The next is a server list. This is just what the name of the server is that is has all the licenses on it. So what this guy is, and this is on every client machine. And if you guys have multiple SNL, so maybe you have one that holds all your PDM license and one that holds all your SOLIDWORKS licenses, you can add multiple servers to here. So you can see the licenses from multiple servers. And when I do that, they'll actually appear in a drop down here so I can look at the licenses on all my different servers. And this is just the license usage. This is what I do in order to see who is using what license. And like I said, this is on the client machine. So any client can log in and let's say they got an error saying they're out of, there's no SOLIDWORKS standard license for them to pull. So I drop down to SOLIDWORKS standard and I can see which users are using this. Right now, you know, users are using this. I don't have SOLIDWORKS standard turned on, but it will let me know and if my coworker I know that they're not really using it, but it's still taking it up on their computer. I can go ping them and say, hey, I need the license. Can you shut off SOLIDWORKS? We're also going to talk about in this how we can create timeouts. So if you're not, if you have SOLIDWORKS going idle for, let's say, more than 15 or 30 minutes, it will go back into the pool so people could take this. So you're not hogging up a free license. All right, so that's all the options available to all the clients. These last four tabs. Let's look at the server administration tab. So this is only available on whatever computer has a server installed and it has a few more advanced options. So first there's the option to start and stop the license server and view the log from that. So I can see like when people have checked different licenses out, things like that. And I can even see, so remember a second ago I got said I couldn't get SOLIDWORKS Premium because I have a restriction. So right now, I can actually see when that happened on my log. And then there's the advanced options. So this is if you wanted to mess with the FlexNet service or use a license file. Um, some people have had to use license files recently um, due to getting different licenses going, but we're not really going to go into that. If you do need to use a license file, you can always contact us and support. Then there's the reread option. This just rereads all the licenses. So 
take a second. It just rereads all the licenses right there if I had a license file. And then there's the modify and I'm actually going to get into that more when we go to actually create the options file. So we're just going to hang tight on this modify tab, but it allows you to activate and reactivate your product, move them to a different computer or show which products are activated. And one other nice thing about the Net License Manager is it lets you know what version it is. So I see right here I'm at version 28, which is 2020. So I want to make sure that the server is at a greater than or equal to version as all my clients. And all your clients will also have that about tab. So if you see like a client that's on 28, but you go over to your Net License Manager and you see that it's on 27, then you'll know that you have to upgrade the server to a newer version. And if you have to upgrade the server to a newer version, we have a great blog here at CATI that'll walk you through that. So if I want to upgrade my license manager, this tells you how to both move and upgrade your license manager. So moving the license manager to a new server and upgrading it there. So we have a great blog available to you guys right there. Tons of information on the net license manager there. All right. All right. So now let's go in and let's look at how we can see if we're having issues with our net. So let's say I try to connect and when I go to pull the Net License Manager, so if I'm on here and I open my Net License Manager and I look at my license and it says, hey, I can't find the server. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So this isn't a real computer, so it's not going to be able to find it. So let's say I do that. It tries to reach that server and I go over to my license manager and I hit this and it says it's going to try for a little bit. Could not get information from this server. What that means is the client computer isn't communicating with this. In this situation, it's because it's not a real server. But if you know that the server name is correct, then there's some troubleshooting that we can do in order to make sure your client can communicate with the server. So the first thing we have, so I know this says PDM connectivity tool and there's stuff about the archive and database server and I just ignore this here. But a really cool thing that they have is the SNL server and what it does is it runs a ping test and a telnet test over both of these servers and it tells you if the ping and telnet tests fail and if those fail it means it's not able to communicate over those ports. Alright, so right here in this situation it failed. What can I do? So there are a few things I want to look at. Here are some keys that you want to look at make, to make sure that they have the correct information. So let's say I go to my registry editor and that key, it's H key local machine. Software. Lex LM Manager, so a lot of times we deal with so software SolidWorks. And you want to make sure that this server is correct right here. This is on the server side, so you want to make sure the server has its own name correct. And then on the client, you also want to check this to make sure that this is correct. And there's also a key in the WOW 6432 node. So if you're seeing some issues connecting, make sure that that these keys are all pointing to the correct server. Yeah, it's server name there just hasn't gotten wiped out yet. All right. Another thing that we want to check on the server if it's not communicating with the server, well, let's make sure the service is running because on every server, there's a service that runs for the Net License Manager. So to open my services, I open up Task Manager, go to Services, and I like to open services from down here just so I can see all of the information about my server services. And 
and I want to head over to solid. There it is. And I want to make sure this is running. If you see that it's stopped, you can go ahead and start it and make sure it's running. If it doesn't run after that, um, you can go in, see if maybe there's a reason it's not starting or anything along those lines. And then finally, you've looked at all of these. Um, an often first step that we do is we look at the firewall settings. So if you go on the client and the server, you're going to set up these firewall settings. So if I type in firewall, I get Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set up rules that say you can communicate over the ports. And if we looked earlier, I remember that DNet License Manager communicates over ports 25734 and 25735. So I'm going to make rules regarding those ports. And I'm going to make an inbound and an outbound rule on both the client and the server. So to make an inbound and outbound rule, I'm going to click on inbound, hit new rule. It's going to be a port rule. Like I said, it was 25734 and 25735. I want to allow the connection on all of the different types, and I'm going to name it SNL. And now those firewall ports are open, and I'm going to want to do the same thing to the outbound rule. And I've actually already done that on the outbound rule. So these are some testing that I want to do before I so that's how we set up and configure the SNL, just a few testing. So some main things I want to take away from that. It uses ports 25734 and 25735. Just kind of the order of operations of the SNL versus PDM versus your SOLIDWORKS client. So you always want SOLIDWORKS to be the greatest. And the last thing we're going to take away is how to activate. And let's get into that because that's a really big part of how we're going to create the options file. So when you have the Net License Manager, on the server side, I talked about how you have this modify button. This modify button, I know I glanced over it real quick, has the option to activate and reactivate your products. So if you ever put a new serial on your network license manager, the first thing you're going to do is activate it after you've put that in. If you don't know how to put a new serial number on, I've actually written a blog adding a serial number to your license manager. So right here, written out this nice blog for you on how to add that serial number. It also has a video walkthrough. So if you ever need to add a new license number, it's all right here. So I added that license number. Now I want to go through and activate. So I'm going to activate, reactivate, and I hit next. And I know a firewall is on the server, and this is where I could change the port. I really don't suggest changing the port unless you have another program um, running is the server name and this is where we get into what this whole talk is about so so this is where you set up the options file it by default goes into C program files 86 SOLIDWORKS Corp normally whatever year you first set up the SNL so I started off with 17 on this computer so that's why it's sitting there and here and I can edit my options file so this is where I can go in and set and edit the options file so I'm going to be talking in just a second on how to write your options file but the first first thing we need to do is edit it so if you do that you can just pull it up and for most of you guys it's going to be blank if you haven't created an options file before and then just to finish off the talk about activation you go through and activate all your licenses i'm not going to do that just because it can take a little bit to activate so we know where to create our options file Let's talk about how we want to set that up. So the first thing I want to talk about in the options file is creating groups and restrictions. So before we actually start saying, hey, this person can't have the simulation license or this person can't have the SOLIDWORKS premium license or this person can only borrow for this amount of time, I want to break up my people who are using these into groups. So groups make it a lot easier to administrate the options file. One nice thing about groups is, so let's say I have groups called engineers and then I have given engineers certain permissions. 
if one of the engineers moves to a different company or I need to add a new engineer in, I can easily just add them into that group by putting in new group members. If I did my whole options file by username, so making a different line for each individual user, that means I have to search through my whole file for the username every time something changes about it. So breaking it up into groups really allows you to control it. And when changes happen as they do, it makes it a lot easier to modify it. So these go off of your Windows username. Another type of group we can have is host group. And host group doesn't go by the user that lo is logged in, but the computer that is in use. So whatever the computer name that's in use, that's how you create that. So let's take a look at what this might look like. So I'm going to open up my options file. So I have a group here. So this is just a normal group. I have a group called admin. And in the admin group is a user called admin and a user called hdaw. So these two are members of our admin group. If I wanted to put in a different user, um, I or let's say, let's go in this situation, my Windows login changed. So my Windows login is no longer hdaw, it's hdaw rows. I can really easily just change it there. And then any admin permissions I had down the options file have been changed. Um, so then I have a host group. So this host group's name is SimPCs. And it looks like the reason that I've set this up is I want certain computers to always be pulling certain simulation licenses. And you can do a host PC two ways. You can either do it through the IP address of the computer. So notice this computer is identified by its IP address or just by the computer name. So whatever the computer name is right here. And if you guys don't know how to find your computer name, there are a few ways to get to it. I always just right click and hit properties on this PC and it tells me computer name right there. Um, there are definitely more than one way to get to that in Windows, but this is just the way I always do. All right. So these two computers are members of the group SimPCs. And then I have a few more groups. So I have engineers. So I have four users in my engineers group. I have interns. I have one user in that. I have PDM viewers, so people who need the PDM viewer licenses, and then people who need the editor licenses. And notice here that people can be in multiple groups. So Tony Stark here is in two groups, as are most of the other users. What you want to be careful of when you have people in two groups, that these don't contradict each other. So I've set this up, engineers and interns are probably going to have mostly to do with SOLIDWORKS licensing and restrictions on that. And then this PDM viewers and editors are mostly gonna have to do with PDM licensing and things on that. So you wanna make sure if you do set this up, it's fine to have people in two groups, just make sure they don't um, overlap. Because if I, for instance, reserved license, um, reserved five licenses for editors and five licenses for engineers or four licenses for engineers, that would kind of be pointless because of the engineers are also editors, so there'd be no reason to double reserve those licenses. All right, so that's how you set up groups and host groups. This is really just breaking your users into manageable groups so you can go and start restricting their license usage. All right, so the most common question we get about SNLs are how to prevent people from ha taking a license for three hours when they're not using it and how to prevent people from borrowing for two weeks and taking that license away from people who might need it. And we're going to do that using the timeout and the max borrow hours. So the way these work is you type them into your options file and you just write timeout, all caps. You write what feature you want to have a timeout and then how many seconds you want it to timeout at. So this is in seconds, so if you think about it, five minutes is going to be um, 180 seconds, 15. So just think about it going through like that. And then max borrow hours is obviously in hours. This doesn't have a feature associated with it. This is just how long can people borrow products and that's in hours, All right? So let's go over to an options file for that. So I have a timeout for the cat editor and the 
contributor. They're timing out at 1800 seconds and 900 seconds. So they are timing out at 30 minutes and at 15 minutes. And then the viewer is timing out at five minutes. So right here, it's just if this license isn't used for 30 minutes for the editor, 15 for the contributor and five for the viewer, then it will go back into the pool. It doesn't take it from the user unless someone actually needs it. So if I have my viewer time out at 300, but nobody's been asking for a user license, no one's gone in and tried to pull it, whoever has it will still hold on to that license. But as soon as someone comes in and tries to pull it and the system realizes, oh, well, they've been idle for five minutes, it will go ahead and pull that back for the user. So it doesn't take it unless someone needs it, and it does give you a chance to save. So one of the really big fears I hear a lot of people, well, if it pulls my SOLIDWORKS license from the user, how are they going to get a chance to save? If they go back to their computer and they see that their license has been pulled, it will come up with a message on the screen and it says, um, you no longer have a SOLIDWORKS license, would you like to save? And they hit yes, and then they can go ahead and at least save their work, and then they need to get their license if they need it, etc. And then max borrow hours. I don't have a max borrow here, but let's say I didn't want anybody borrowing. Let's make sure the typing is right. This is actually very important when you're going through and writing your options file. So I have max borrow hours and let's say I set it to 36. So this means people can only borrow licenses for 36 hours, which is a day and a half. Something to be aware of, so if they go to borrow a license, so right now it's afternoon, but let's say it were 11 o'clock, uh, or let's say you're on central time. If I want to borrow for 36 hours, well, I'm thinking, well, that will be until Thursday. It's technically not through all of Thursday until noon at this time. So if you try to borrow it and you have the max borrow, and you go here, it will throw you an error saying you're not allowed to borrow this license. Let's take a look at what that error would look like. Selection first. So I go. And it says I can't borrow the license. The latest variable borrow date is until April 7th or 8th or however I've set it up. So it will give you this error if it can't borrow for that entire day. It will still it until the max borrow hours it just that's how it does its days it does its days for the entirety of the day not like oh well you're in a partial way through this day so just be aware of that if you get that error and look at the clock and see how it all works out all right the next thing we're going to look at is creating max reserve and borrow low water so let's talk about these commands the max is allowing this group a maximum of these licenses. So let's say I want a certain group to have a maximum of two SOLIDWORKS premium licenses for the group engineers. So this would mean that the engineers, even though there are four of them, can only have two of my SOLIDWORKS premium licenses. Same goes for reserve. So let's say I only want, I need the engineers to have SOLIDWORKS Pro licenses available to them at all times, like three of them always need to be working on Pro. So reserve three SOLIDWORKS professional group engineers. And then the borrow low water. So this is, I always want to keep three of my premium licenses available. I don't want people to be able to borrow out all of my SOLIDWORKS premium licenses, and then they're not available to the people who are working on site. So I would say for SOLIDWORKS Professional, three of the licenses can't be borrowed. So that's the borrow low water. So you're not allowed to have, you need to have three of those licenses always available to people. So this is a good time to get into this feature name. So when you're writing the feature names into the options file, you guys will notice that they look bit funny so it's like SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS Office Pro, SOLIDWORKS Premium and a really an often question I get is okay that's nice how do I know which what is used for what like what what is SOLIDWORKS Office what is SOLIDWORKS Pro what is my simulation license called 
And once again, we have a really good blog for you on that, on creating your options file. It has all of the features that I'm talking about, but it also has all of the different license types and their names here. So like Composer is SW Composer and everything right here. So if you're ever having issues and you need to know what exactly that feature is called, it's right here. Make sure to type it out exactly because it is very um, picky with the spelling and everything. It's, it's, it doesn't give you a lot of room for typos or any room for typos for that matter. All right, so let's take a look at the options file I created. So I already saw, I made my groups, I made my timeout. In this fictional company, I have five SOLIDWORKS licenses, two pro licenses, two premium licenses, three or five editors, three contributors, or wait, three editors, three contributors, and five viewers. And then I have two simulation pro and two one simulation premium, and then I have four composer and four visualized licenses. So this fictional company has a decent amount of licenses that they want to restrict. The borrow low water, or they've got a maximum borrow hours of 60, so people can't borrow it for longer than 60 hours. We know what that means. Borrow low water, SolidWorks 2. So that means, well, there are five SolidWorks licenses. People can only borrow out three of the SolidWorks licenses. Two always have to be available one for the office, and um, one for the premium. And then exclude borrow, we just kind of didn't talk about this one yet, but it's saying, you know what, the interns can't borrow licenses. I don't want them taking the licenses and bringing them home. I need them to be available for the engineers. So I've just excluded the interns from borrowing the licenses. So exclude borrow, SOLIDWORKS licenses from the group interns. So let's look at some other things that we can restrict. So we have include, exclude, and exclude borrow, which I just talked about. So include means this group is allowed to have this feature. Exclude means this group is not allowed to have this feature. And you want to be very careful when you do these. So the first thing is an include, or an exclude takes precedent over an include. So you don't want so if I've included a group in this feature, but then excluded them from this feature, so if I said engineers can have SOLIDWORKS Pro, but Tony Stark can't have SOLIDWORKS Pro, he won't be able to have that feature. So the exclude takes precedent there. And it works pretty much the same way as reserved. So it's include, what feature type, and then group or host group, and then the item. So let's take a look at what a options file would look like for that. So I have include the engineers for premium so they can borrow premium. Something to be aware of. When, in this case, I have them ability to borrow premium, so that's fine. If I include a group in normal SOLIDWORKS, something you guys might have noticed if you're borrowing licenses, whenever I take out SOLIDWORKS premium, it also takes a license of SOLIDWORKS standard. You can't use SOLIDWORKS Premium or Professional without also grabbing a SOLIDWORKS standard license. So if I did something like, spelled it right? SOLIDWORKS Office, what I'm saying here is no other group is included in SOLIDWORKS Office. So if an engineer went and tried to check out premium, they would get an error because by this options file, only the interns can check out Office. So be very careful when you're doing that for the Office restriction because if you have a product in an include group, it assumes that now only this group is included and that can get when you have products like Premium and Pro that need this license in order to check out this license. All right. And then I have exclude. So I can do this by user or group. So I've excluded the user Thor from SOLIDWORKS Composer and from Visualize. So even though the 
engineers are included in Composer, which that user is a part of, they won't be able to check out Composer because I have an exclude statement down here. And then I've excluded my SIM PCs from Office Pro and Premium because I only want the SIM PCs using my simulation license. I don't want them, people using that machine to do Pro and Premium features, I just want it to be using simulation. And then I have an exclude all here, meaning this person can't get files. So if you have someone who I ran into an issue where someone was logging in and they weren't supposed to have access to the VPN, but before they could get them not access to the VPN, they wanted at least to stop them from taking their licenses. And we just used an exclude all, so at least they couldn't take the SOLIDWORKS licenses. So if you guys have more questions about this, I've mentioned the blogs a few times, but I also have this whole talk in a little bit of blog form. This is the exact same thing here. It just goes into what each of the commands mean and how you set them up. And then I talked about adding serial numbers to your SNL, the license manager, and then moving licenses. So we have lots of good blogs for you guys. If you have more questions about that or you can always contact support if you have questions about your net license manager. All right so that's topic two and that one was a big one. So let's look at some key things about that. We had user group versus host group versus user. Like I said I really prefer to use user and group if at all possible. You did or I prefer to use group and host group if at all possible. You did notice I used user once in my fictional options file because I just wanted to exclude one user from composer and visualize. So I'm not saying never use group user but host group and group are a lot easier to control. Users must be an include statement to acquire the license. If there's no include statement for that product at all, it's fine. But if a product's under an include statement, the user has to be an include statement to acquire the license and goes into don't over restrict. So like I was talking about the include SOLIDWORKS standard prevents everyone else from checking out Pro. And then here, just in the last few minutes are just some advanced features of this. So we have automatic reread, on or off, so it says every time it starts the service, it'll automatically reread the options file and check to see if anything's changed. Group case sensitive or not, so I found this important because I have a group called admin, but notice all my other groups are engineers and interns, but this one's just admin. So if I had case sensitive on and I accidentally put in admin, like I have all these others, it wouldn't know what to do with that. So if you have groups to case sensitive off, it doesn't look for the capital versus non-capital letters when looking at that. Um, timeout all. So this is if we talked about making a timeout for a very specific file. So let's look at that. We have like the timeout for the cat editor and the viewer. If I wanted to time out all, this just says, and any other license is timed out after 30 minutes. So it doesn't matter what type of license it is. If you've been idle with it for 30 minutes and someone else needs it, they're going to be able to pull the license from you. And then I talked about the exclude all just to say this user can't use any of these licenses. And I just have a case example of an issue that I see a lot of people have. I did talk about it, but I want to go into it again just because I think it's really important. So I have my really simple option file set up. So I have my group of my managers. I have my group of my AEs or support techs. So I have this group and this group. I've included managers for just SOLIDWORKS standard and I've excluded the AEs from premium. So they can't get premium, but they should be able to get pro if we have pro licenses available. If Peer goes and tries to check out a SOLIDWORKS Pro license, he gets an error that looks like this. And this goes back to that over restricting. Remember, because I included managers in SOLIDWORKS, nobody who's not included is going to be able to check out that license. 
So I would need to include group managers in SOLIDWORKS. I'd also have to include the group for AEs for SOLIDWORKS if I wanted them to be able to check out premium. So that's just one I see very often. So I really wanted to reiterate that there. So just to go over the key takeaways, we set, we set up and configured the SNL. We know it goes over ports 25734. We know that the SNL has to be greater than or equal to basically everything below it. Um, we learned some ways we can make port exceptions and check to see if our SNL is communicating correctly. From there, we reactivated our licenses and created that options file. So we want to make groups, host groups, or by usernames. And then there are a lot of different ways we can restrict, such as include statements, exclude statements, borrow statements, things along those lines. And then just some advanced capability like the exclude all or the timeout all and just some troubleshooting with that common case scenario there. So just as a call to action, go ahead and create your own options file, test it out. Uh, I've seen a lot of people using that, especially with people working over a VPN and kind of leaving their computers more often. They've been creating those options files. So go ahead, create them, test them out. And if you have any questions, let us know in support.